so to service the rangefinder well, the first thing I want to do one thing that's worth noting is this screw here the pivot point it's adjustable it can be the piece it connects to can be slid slightly left or right in the body we need it to go back in the same place so what I normally do is I mark with a sharp screwdriver around the end of that arm now looking at the state of that mark I've got on there now when I put it back together I need that arm to be sitting at that point and then everything will be good well as good as it's going to be so I stretch out the spring slightly here I can pull that pin out of there and release that put the pin to one side to remove this arm you need a tool in here a stiff pair of tweezers may work I see if I've got a pair here depends how enthusiastically it's been tightened yeah it's going to work today and unscrew that lift the screw off underneath that screw we've got a wavy washer the arm can come off now it's got a brass or bronze bush through here now that's uh, slotted basically it gives a bit of spring tension so that it will take up the slot I'm just going to put a scratch across that and across the arm so I can put it back in exactly the same position from where it came from that'll help keep everything aligned correctly there is the bush that the screw screwed into and it runs in that slot there or if it's fitted in that slot there it doesn't run anywhere the prism on the end two small screws hold that in place and they also serve to adjust the position of the prism for the vertical alignment of our rangefinder images the prism assembly here the glass prism is held into this bracket with a little screw here and some lacquer don't disturb the screw and don't muck with the lacquer you have a hell of a job getting that thing back in the correct alignment if you do to the body the rear eyepiece here let's get that off single screw at the back that bracket will lift off and there's that glass at the back now it's flat on one face the flat side should be outside the convex shape should be inside don't mess it up you won't like the result yeah to remove clean the rest of it I remove this screw and that bracket from the side this is quite complex in here there's a spring tab here I'm sliding that out here I've got a glass with a mirrored frame lines on it and a black mask that comes out of that central slot there now the mirrored frame lines face to the front of the rangefinder they're on one surface of the glass they're not on both and it needs to face to the front this component we've got a spring that holds that in position see if that'll come loose first yeah it's coming loose much the same as this other one it may be a heavier spring it is it's a heavier spring than the other one but basically the same shape try not to mix them up getting this apart in order to clean this because we've got two pieces of glass there and a mask in between them and a little plastic mask on the front or celluloid mask on the front we need to get that apart 
And this is locked in position with a little dab of lacquer here and here. So I've got to soften that lacquer. And do that with some acetone. So all that's wanted is a drop of acetone in there. And the same at the top, same position. You've usually got to do it more than once. We've got to soften that lacquer. And typically what I do is I just, you can see the edge of the mask between the two pieces of glass here. Typically I just flick that with my fingernail to see if it's coming loose. And it's not. Don't force it, you'll end up breaking one of the pieces of glass. So add some more acetone. Try again. Yep, that, I just gave that a flick and that immediately shifted. Right. If I can push that rear glass out down the slot, there it is. Again, it's mirrored on one side only. This is the smaller rectangle of mirroring. Then we had the mask. That's just a painted bit of metal. Then we've got two components here. We've got the plastic mask from the outside, or it's celluloid actually, and we've got the glass component here which is plain on the front and heavily concave on the back. So these components, well the components from the front that had the lacquer on them need to be cleaned of all traces of that lacquer because now we've managed to spread it all over the place by melting it with the acetone. So I'm wiping those components with some acetone now on a cotton bud, particularly the edges of the uh, glass, the thin glass here with the mirrored lines on it. Now that um, silvering on the glass is actually comparatively robust. You may well find that the silvering is virtually gone on your camera. It was probably eroded by atmospheric um, corrosion more than anything else. It, it's oxidized or gone away. It doesn't clean away particularly easy with acetone or glass clean or anything like that. It's quite robust. That's the solid silver lines here. I'm talking about, not the semi-silvered mirror back in the rangefinder body that I haven't got to yet. That's a different kettle of fish. I'm wiping these edges carefully here because I can see that there's acid, there's lacquer still on those edges. I want these components nice and clean. So normally I clean these particular components with acetone, make sure I get rid of his, that lacquer or as much of that lacquer as I possibly can. This celluloid piece at the front, that's got a little blob of lacquer on the top and bottom where it was stuck into place. This is um, shiny on the inside and matte on the outside. And it's also got the frame markings, the parallax markings. And if you look at it, you'll see that it's not the same top and bottom. The top of this frame has two tiny marks either side and the bottom only has one little mark in the corner there. That's nice and clean, that's ready to go back. And that only leaves me this little painted part here and here. I've got to be reasonably cautious because if you overdo it wiping that with acetone you'll wipe the paint off. So all I'm wanting to do is just get rid of any of that lacquer that was stuck on there. That's good. 
So those components are good. The rangefinder body. All that's left in here now is the semi-silvered mirror. Now, the surface facing to the front of the camera is glass. The surface facing to the rear of the camera, to the eyepiece, that's the semi-silvering. Don't touch that surface. If you touch that surface, you will not like the result. You'll end up with a nice clear piece of glass and you'll have no rangefinder image. This is quite clean and it doesn't really require an awful lot of work from me. I'm going to clean it in the ultrasonic cleaner as well anyway because I use do it at the same time as these pieces of glass with the frame lines on and I'm making sure that I have got this in the right way. The silvered edges should be facing to the rear and the other piece, the one from the middle section, the silver line should be facing to the front. If you get them in the wrong way, you will not get proper bright lines showing in your finder. I'll put that little bracket back on there to hold them in place and run the screw in. That's ready to go in the ultrasonic cleaner now. It doesn't get long in the ultrasonic cleaner. I typically give it three minutes and uh, the glass here is all fairly clean anyway with the exception of the semi-silvered mirror. It looks a little bit dusty but it's certainly not bad. That should clean up fine. So the ultrasonic cleaner for this lot. I'm sure I've done this somewhere on a video of uh, how to service the rangefinder from the 3C. So I'm not going to show you that part. I have the rangefinder body back from the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description to the instructions for cleaning the rangefinder for a Retina 3C that I've done on a previous occasion. So these parts are all nice and clean and sparkly. And I've got to reassemble this. So, I'll gather together the pieces I need to put in here. And I want that mask and the retaining spring. That's for the central glass piece here. Where are we here? That central piece there. And there's the retaining spring for the front section. I'll start by removing the screw from that retainer. Flick that retainer off. I'll check that I've got my pieces of glass around the right way. That the silvered face is indeed facing the front in this case. You can tell which surface the silvered lines are on if you look closely enough. A mark there, I'm not sure what that is. Or whether it will go away. That looks good. Yeah, I'm confident I've got the silvering on the front there. The rectangular mask slides behind that. And it's retainer, which is the thinner cross-section retainer. Slides in there and holds that in position. The front component here. This should have its silvered lines on the back face, it has. Just make sure I blow any residual dust off that surface. That looks good. Now the, the front lens here I have cleaned. It's picked up a speck of dust since. We'll see if we can see the back of that.
this is the concave side that I'm cleaning here and on the concave side I fit the mask the mask clips over this like that and the whole piece slides in the front of that glass piece I already had in there we have the parallax correction mask here the one that has the little lines at the top which is here there's two tiny ticks one either side and one up in the top corner that's the top face that slides in it goes to the dull side it's dull grey on one side that faces the front the shiny side goes inwards and I can put its retaining clip in place that was the heavier of the two retaining clips and then this retainer goes on the outside just having a look now at this to see what sort of state it's in it all looks good and at the back we've got the, the rear piece, the eyepiece here its retaining mask and that's held in place with a screw so that I need to clean first normally by the time you've dismantled it this far you've managed to get a fingerprint on that uh, piece of glass, or at least I do I can never get near a piece of glass without leaving a fingerprint on it there's another pair of tweezers that's a bit better the side I'm cleaning at the moment is the side that's virtually flat that goes to the rear, goes towards the eye side that goes into the rear of the rangefinder here is convex checking I've got that free from any dust I'll drop that into place mask fits over the rear of it is held in place with a single screw at this stage I should be able to look through that and it should look nice and clear and I can see my silvered lines and the frame lines and I've got the mask the right way up because the little parallax correction marks are in the right place so that part's done I've got to fit the arm back in place in the body so first I need to clean the arm because I haven't done that yet so the glass it's got a little glass lens on it I'm just cleaning this and I'm just using normal domestic glass cleaner nothing magic checking closely to make sure it is in fact clean and I haven't managed to wipe a lot of grease in there or done anything else awful I'll take a bit of naphtha and I'm going to wipe the frame there where it fits onto the rangefinder body try not to get great threads of cotton ever, everywhere these are the components that hold it to the body and I'm just wiping these these ones are particularly clean unusually so it's much more common to find everything quite dirty it's not uncommon to find some corrosion on the 
wavy washer in particular. In this case there's none of that, it's all looking good. But I do need to put a touch of lubricant on here. So I will lubricate this with a wipe of molybdenum paste. So I'm just wiping in the centre there. Where's my all purpose block of wood I can work on? There it is. Now that little brass bush, I put a little alignment mark on there when I took it apart so it would go back in exactly the same spot when I'd reassembled it. I've lined that up. I'll just wipe that surface very lightly with molybdenum paste. You only need to leave a slightly dirty mark with that stuff, you don't need to slop it on. And to fit this in place, well, we've got our little bush screw that it screws into. That has to be fitted in place from the inside here, which means getting it in from the back here. So I've got a pair of curved tweezers here which allow me to do this quite well. Just drop that into position. I usually pop a big screwdriver through that. You can't see anything now. I'll zoom out a bit. I'll pop a big screwdriver in underneath to hold that bush in position while I'm getting the arm in place. So there it is propped up on that screwdriver. Where that wavy wash is going to run on that arm, I'll just put a wipe of molybdenum paste on there. Place the wavy washer in position. Put the screw in there. You see any of that? Yeah, only just. Run that screw in. Is it going to pick up? Yeah, it's picking up. Back down to ground level. Check that the arm moves freely. I haven't got that tightened yet. I'm watching my alignment mark here at the end that I scraped, scratched on there when, before I took it apart. That should be just visible and no more. It's about there. And I was able to loosen this using a pair of stiff tweezers. And I'll tighten it the same way. Check that that moves freely, it appears to. And got my return spring which needs to fit in here. Of course you can't see any of this because I'm stretching that spring out and drop that pin in position at the back. Check that that moves back freely. That's good. I haven't even managed to put a thumbprint on the back of the viewfinder yet. I'm doing very well. The last piece of this puzzle is the prism that goes on the end. So I'll inspect this. There are three faces of the prism to clean. At the back, at the front, at the front here, and the inside. So, taking another cotton bud, Moisten it with a bit of domestic glass cleaner. I'll clean those surfaces. I'll clean the two outside ones first because I can get to them and see them easily. There's no silvering on this prism. It relies on uh, what we call that total internal reflection to transmit the light through there to ensure that the light is completely reflected through the prism and doesn't just pass out the back of it. Just checking that and I've got the light coming in from the right hand side beside me here running directly into there so I can see quite clearly whether that surface is clean or whether I've managed to leave any threads of cotton in there which is not uncommon. And all of these three surfaces need to be clean. 
just seeing a mark there I think it's on that rear surface the prism is held in place or locked in place with a touch of clear lacquer down both sides that lacquer sometimes extends further than it might do should do there's certainly a thread of cotton in there that looks good now and the prism can go in place just like that faces to the front flat face to the front. The two small screws run in from the top and these screws adjust the angle of that prism and in doing so you can adjust the vertical alignment of your rangefinder images. The vertical alignment is also controlled to some extent by the arm here moving that lens there up and down so if this is lifted slightly by the mechanism then it will shift it so you can't make a final adjustment till this is all in the camera and you're ready to uh, ready to go let's check that this is pressed back firmly do those screws up lightly and then I'll make my adjustments and I'll make my adjustments by looking out the window through the rangefinder if the as you move the, the arm here at the front you'll notice one of the images moves if the moving image is high relative to the static image you need to adjust the screw at the back here screw it down slightly if the moving image is low relative to the fixed image you need to screw down the front screw and obviously you need to shuffle between the two screws to get the position correct and have that prism held firmly at the same time so I'll just check that now the moving image in this case is high so I'm just going to tighten that screw at the back and check again it's still high I'll slightly slacken the front screw, tighten the back screw a bit more. I think that's probably moved it too much. Now it's low. Let's move the front screw, tighten the front screw up. There's obviously a bit of play there. Now that's correct. So my horizontal, my vertical alignment is correct. My horizontal alignment is not. Looking at this, as the rangefinder returns to the infinity position I can see that it's coming back further I haven't fixed you'll note, remember that we dissolved the lacquer that was holding this in place now that holds this whole front lens assembly in position and holding the front lens assembly in position means that it stops that shifting if you shift this lens one way or the other way you will shift the horizontal alignment I'm just going to press that lightly across and see if my horizontal alignment has improved or whether it's worse looks like it's slightly worse let's push it back the other way that's improved And that's virtually bang on there so without having made any adjustments to the screws here on the arm my alignment is just about spot on so at that point I am going to put a drop of lacquer in the center there and under there leave that to set and that will stop that lens from being able to shift in the body at all and that will mean that when I make my final adjustments the adjustments will stay so for the lacquer I'm just using some clear nail varnish nice cheap stuff from the uh, from the bargain shop just drop it into that groove
and do the same at the top. And I need to put a bit of acetone in my nice cheap lacquer because it's a bit thick. That should do nicely. And that's my rangefinder. Come on camera, come into focus. That's my rangefinder basically ready to go back in the camera body. So I'll put that to one side now because there's an awful lot of assembly work before we get to that point. <laughs> 